So we know that gastric cancer is common, is the fifth most common uh, cancer worldwide, uh, fifth among males in India and seventh among women in India. More importantly, it's a complex heterogeneous disease which has varying etiology, incidence, prognosis, and management. The, uh, the high geographical variation is very obvious. Western patients and Asian patients present very different epidemiological, clinical pathological, diagnostic, prognostic, and treatment features. And despite the recent technological advances in the field of medical, uh, especially in medical oncology, also the five survival rates uh, in many of the in many of the studies is as low as thirty to forty five percent in data coming in from the West. I, this is probably one um, one particular cancer where you cannot. Uh, overemphasize the importance of multimodality approach. It's not just between surgeons, uh, radiation oncologists, or medical oncologists, but very importantly, uh, we need good nutritionists and dietary advice because many of these patients become malnourished, remain malnourished during treatment, and that plays an important role in their recovery post-completion of treatment. Only about 1% to 3% of gastric cancer patients actually have a hereditary form of cancer, and these are typically associated with certain uh, germline genetic mutations. For example, the hereditary diffuse gastric cancer syndrome, where you have the CDH1 uh, gene, the Pugh Jagger syndrome, where the SKT11 gene is uh, mutated, then you have the juvenile polyposis, uh, importantly, also the Lynch syndrome. Uh, which is a uh, inherited colon cancer syndrome also has a subset of patients who have uh, a risk of 1 to 13 percent of getting gastric cancer and also other rarer syndromes like the leaf romani syndrome and the familial gastric cancer syndrome. Now unlike other diseases like breast cancer and ovarian cancer where the tools for assessing the risk of uh, developing those diseases are very well established in gastric cancer this is relatively limited. And therefore, it is very difficult to screen or identify high-risk patients uh, who are at a risk of having uh, genetic cancer, uh, cancer. We went through this classification, Dr. Prasad did mention that uh, the Lauren classification and the WHO classification are what, is, are, what are currently used uh, in our patients. Having said that, this is primarily a histomorphological classification. And uh, apart from giving us a classification, it doesn't give us too much predictive or prognostic importance. So for example, the Lauren classification is a simple classification that evaluates patient into the intestinal type, the diffuse type, and the intermediate type. And we know that the prognosis of the diffuse type is worse than that of the intestinal type. Having said that, it's difficult for us to uh, identify patients for one particular type of treatment based on these classifications. So while these classifications have been in use from 1960s to now, in fact, the uh, WHO classification came sometime in the early 2000s, these are primarily pathological classification. We do not have too much of an impact on our clinical practice. What changed was in 2014, where you had the Cancer Genome Atlas program. Uh, and at the same time, I think in 2015, the Asian Cancer Research Group came up with this molecular data of gastric cancer. And both of these have divided gastric and esophageal cancers into similar groups. So the esophageal cancer is the, uh, there is a separate category of the esophageal cancer, which is uh, characterized by the CCND1 amplification, whereas G-junction and gastric cancers are classified into four different categorizations. One is the chromosome instability, the EBV, the MSI or the hypermutated group and the uh, genomic stability group. So while these two presentations, uh, one from Japan and one from uh, Singapore came roughly around the same time and have different nomenclatures, basically they all divide gastric cancer on the basis of molecular characterizations into four distinct groups. So the EBV group has a frequency of about 8.8%. It's more predominant in male patients seen primarily in the fundus or the body. And uh, it's important to note that in this group, the important molecular alteration apart from the CBV, CIMP, is that there is immune cell signaling, which is high in this group. This, uh, this group, that is the EBV positive group, has a predictive importance as well as prognostic, and I'll show that in the next couple of slides. The MSI group is the next group, which is about 21.7%. Having said that, in clinical practice, the MSI group, which is diagnosed by current techniques, does not come so high. It's somewhere around the 
4 to 6 percent in incidence. It's seen in older patients with a median of 72 years. Here, hypermutation is important. And uh, this, again, uh, has, has a predictive as well as a prognostic value. Now, if you see the reaction to treatment, it is mentioned that there is no response to adjuvant chemotherapy, and that is correct. It's uh, shown that this group of patients have a limited response, not to adjuvant, but primarily to new adjuvant chemotherapy. And this information does have a practical implication while choosing patients for new adjuvant treatment. The genomic stability group is roughly around 20% of patients. This is a group of patients who are much younger, and they are characterized by a diffuse histology. This group of patients has a poor prognosis outcome. The uh, chromon instability is the most common, roughly around 50% of patients. It is characterized by an intestinal histology. It is typically seen in the GE junction and the cardiac region, and this has a relatively better prognostic. So this is the seminal paper that did show, and the reason for showing this graph is to, uh, is to understand how this molecular classification helps us in uh, segregating patients. So for example, if you looked at the uh, Lauren classification, in the genomic stability group, almost 75% of patients have the uh, diffuse type of Lauren classification as a histology, indicating that these are more aggressive tumors and have a prognostic uh, implication. Uh, this side shows that the, the EBV type of molecular subgroup does much, much better as compared to the uh, genomic stability. And this is uh, as a part of the overall group uh, in the MD Anderson cohort. And a similar thing is seen in patients uh, who have received chemotherapy. You can see that the response to chemotherapy in the EBV group is excellent as opposed to the genomic stability group, where in spite of chemotherapy, uh, the prognosis is not so good. Uh, 